Well, 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 good people. It looks like 2021 might be an amazing year for the PC space because an amazing battle is shaping up between AMD and Intel and more competition is obviously better choices for you guys and hopefully better prices from both sides. Anyways, with all the big announcements from Nvidia, Intel, AMD and many other companies, we want to focus on the less reported things and that got the entire team thinking about the small CPU lineup from Intel that is quite exciting, codenamed Tiger Lake H35. We already know that Tiger Lake is reserved for the thin and light ultrabook side. You can check out our full explained video over here, but H35 dials up the architecture to 11, so better clock speeds and obviously better performance. I get it. This might look like a really weird move by Intel, but it actually opens up quite a lot of opportunities in the notebook space. And Tiger Lake on steroids, I mean, this might make this the coolest CPUs from Intel that is also the most exciting because the opportunities really target towards the ultra portable gaming form factor. And I know what you might be thinking like, why and what? But laptop manufacturers, especially with whom we've spoken with, think this is going to be like the next big deal. Especially with Ryzen 4000 and 5000 on the mobile side being so popular, the Tiger Lake H35 might be like a really a smart way for Intel to steal back some market share from the Ultrabook uh, performance side of things. But let's talk about the specs, the performance, and does it actually add more confusion to an already complicated Intel lineup and a few devices we'll be talking about right after this. Well, look what we have here, the new Fractal Design Meshify 2. No crazy surprises here, just a well thought out and functional case with a new swivel front door to easily remove a dust filter behind the school panel. Three case fans are included with a fantastic top fan bracket for easy installation of anything outside the enclosure. USB-C adopters will appreciate the IO and the usual awesome user experience you get with a Fractal Plus, zero frustration with cable management, guaranteed. The Meshify 2, a proper airflow enclosure for your next build, check it out below. So let's talk about this ultra portable gaming segment where Intel's trying to push their uh, Tiger Lake chips in. It's not anything new, but they're just trying to push it to that next level. A few companies already have dipped their toes into the light and slim gaming space by blending ultrabook dimensions and discrete GPUs into that sort of hybrid laptop. Some great examples of this are the Razer Blade Stealth, the ROG Zephyrus G14, which is amazing, uh, and the new Dell XPS 15, even though that one's productivity focused rather than gaming. And while all those machines had pretty excellent performance across the board, the one thing that was lacking was GPU horsepower because they just ranged from GTX 1650 Ti all the way up to RTX 2060 Max-Q. And so Tiger Lake H35 processors are meant to create a new niche with an efficient CPU architecture that specializes in lightly threaded workloads like games that also brings in really good GPU horsepower or just power in general with GPUs ranging from RTX 3060 all the way to RTX 3070s. The resulting laptops will sit right below the typical thin enthusiast 15 and 17 inch laptops like the Legion 5 or MSI GS65 Stealth, but provide even more portability and much longer battery life. The intent is to keep these laptops in the 14 and 15 inch form factors under 18 millimeters uh, in thickness, which is awesome for portability. And in terms of price, I mean, expect to pay a slight premium because of the convenience of a small light powerful notebook, but at least all the other specs will be covered. And at this point, you're probably wondering, and we were too, why doesn't Intel just use the existing Comet Lake H and U series processors, but aside from like doing something new so that new and shiny processors are in the news, none of those uh, processors can actually deliver what Tiger Lake H35 promises. And a lot of that has to do with Willow Cove core architecture found in Tiger Lake. While Sunny Cove was a bit of a disaster, this follow-up design offers much, much better performance and its frequency scales really well with voltage. Meanwhile, the 10 nanometer process with super thin technology allows for a pretty efficient chip all things considered. So H35 is going to act like a bridge between U and H series, so higher clock speeds and better overall gaming performance than the U series or current Tiger Lake G CPUs, but less cores and more efficient than the H series. Intel had another little surprise for us too, and that was a glimpse into what their next generation of high-end H series mobile CPUs would look like. Those replacements for Comet Lake H will be coming in the second half of this year and will have up to eight cores, 16 threads, 
20 PCIe Gen 4 lanes and will also be based off the Tiger Lake architecture with the Willow Cove cores. These could be a very serious competitor for AMD's 5000H series, especially on the connectivity front with native Thunderbolt 4. But anyways, back to the H35. The real star of the show is Tiger Lake's performance, especially in gaming, since it offers a lot higher IPC and lightly threaded performance than anything else in Intel's laptop lineup. Even the H series cannot really compare. The only thing that matches the H35 single thread performance is the super high-end i9-10980HK, which is only available in really expensive gaming laptops. And sure, I know what you're thinking, this is only a microscopic little snapshot on uh, what this thing can do, plus, you know, a hand-painted benchmark, but based on what Tiger Lake uh, has shown us in the past, these results are promising. There are a few other features I need to talk about. Since Tiger Lake CPUs were originally designed to be used on Ultrabooks, there's only four PCIe Gen 4 lanes from the CPU that can be used for graphics. From a bandwidth standpoint, that equals to X8 Gen 3 link speed, so don't worry about bottlenecking the RTX 3060s or 3070s that should be plenty of bandwidth. One other cool feature is that Intel is also working with NVIDIA to bring resizable bar support to a number of their platforms, including Tiger Lake. And that rollout is supposed to happen over time and progressively, but as it does, we hopefully will see some performance in some games eventually. So what does the lineup look like? And even though Intel went through a bit of a rebranding to try to simplify the naming schemes, my gosh, it still looks a bit of like a number soup in a bowl, but I'm gonna do my best to try and explain everything. So all of these are four core eight thread CPUs with configurable TDP of 28 watts or 35 watts, but Intel expects majority to ship in the 35 watt form, while the i7 11370H and the i5 11300H will probably be used in the majority of models. There's also an 11375H special edition, and that thing uses the highest bin Tiger Lake chips and clocks them to maximum single core frequency of five gigahertz. I I should also mention that the i7s uh, get the XE graphics with 96 execution units, while the i5 gets 80 execution units. When compared to the highest end Tiger Lake CPU available right now, you can see the 28 watt setting doesn't change all that much, but at 35 watts, the base clock gets extended by around 10%. But this only tells us a small part of the story because with the additional power and thermal headroom, the new H35 CPUs should be able to sustain higher clock speeds for longer periods of time and more consistent performance as well. So not too much fluctuations. And also remember the that most Tiger Lake CPUs that are out in market right now use the 15 watt setting versus the uh, 28 watt setting. So that's going to be also a pretty big difference. The biggest advantage with Tiger Lake is going to be it's relatively low TDP that will allow uh, notebook manufacturers to maximize that thermal budgets that they have for the thin and light notebooks while also using the more powerful discrete GPUs. A good example of this is Acer's new Predator Triton 300 SE, which is the sleek gray 14 inch gaming laptop that's just 17.9 millimeters thick and weighs just 1.7 kilograms. Inside there's the i7-11375H Special Edition, 16 gigs of memory and Nvidia RTX 3060. Supposedly this is going to be available in February in EU for 1500 euros and North America starting in March for about 1400 bucks. So yeah, not really affordable, but if they can nail battery life, performance, build quality, and all the other features, this could be a really popular option, especially for that niche of ultrabooks that are also gaming notebooks. The other laptop I want to talk about is this. It's the Tough F15, a 15.6 inch gaming laptop that might have a similar name as the Tough A15 Eber looked at last year, but it's super different. It's lighter, it's slimmer, a lot cleaner looking, and it packs some serious horsepower. So this one gets the i7-11370 H and 16 gigs of 3200 memory, uh, along with an NVIDIA RTX 3070. It's all crammed into a gray and white chassis that is 19 millimeters thick and weighs about two kilos. Not only that, but it comes with up to 240 Hertz IPS display that covers 100% of sRGB color spectrum. Pricing on the Tough F15 starts at 1300 US, and that puts it right in line with Asus's own Zephyrus G14 and a bit higher priced than their refreshed Tough A15. I'm really excited to get this into our hands and test out performance and see actually how it compares, especially because availability is supposed to be quite soon in February. So stay tuned for that. We do have some reservations though, because Tiger Lake H35 is not supposed to be this massive CPU powerhouse, but 
Will it bottleneck the new high-end RTX 3070s and RTX 3060s? Intel tells us no, but we'll have to test that for ourselves. I guess that's it for Tiger Lake H35, little roundup on what to expect. It might not have the massive marketing around like we saw with AMD Zen 3 or Rocket Lake, but we feel it's cool and hopefully it's what everyone would require and want in that thin and light space. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.